Hi guys and welcome back to the channel where today we have a very special video for you. Basically an update on what's been happening with RTR Imperium Serectum and where the mod is going next. I know a load of you are fans of this mod and have our little chats with the mod team. And today of course we have the big cheese. We've got Ahal11 back with us again. Welcome back to the channel mate. The big cheese is here man. <laughs> Good to be here though. Yeah, thank you very much again for coming to the channel. And um, I'm sure a lot of you out there do have questions about the mod and uh, where it's kind of been the last few months. So today we're just going to go through that and just as an update to you guys so you know what's going on. Um, so first of all, Ahal, where have you guys been? <laughs> um, we have not uh, been away. Uh, we've all been here. We've all been working. Um I guess the activity is as busy as it ever has been um, since our last release. It's just, um, I think <clears throat> we hit a moment where we realized that we needed to make a lot of uh, very, uh, not, I wouldn't say dramatic, but very important shifts in how we approach the creation of this mod because it basically became uh, too much. So we are definitely here and we are definitely working, but we just have not been able to put anything out publicly yet. Yeah, cool. So um, can you elaborate a little bit on why, um, of course, there, there has been, I, I, don't, I hesitate to call it a delay because there's not really such thing as a delay in modding, I would say. Um, but why maybe there's been less news recently than there has maybe last year um, or the year before that sort of thing um yeah it's, it's definitely not i guess it's a delay for us uh in our minds but it's not a delay officially because we never even set out an idea of when the release would be um so for me it's more like a change of course but not even like a dramatic change of course it's basically just um um I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's kind of hard to find a word, but like a reset or a, a revision. How about that? A revision. Yeah. And um, what was the main reason behind that? Well, uh, <laughs> quite honestly, uh, it's we pushed this thing to its limits, and we yeah. understood. We we were. Uh, it was revealed to us through trial and error and through just adding all kinds of different things, what the limits are on Realm Remastered. You know, when Feral released it and we were, some of the modders were like talking to them, we wanted limits removed. Yeah. Well, that, that that's like, you know, there could only be 500 units in the game back in the day. Yeah. Now that's unlimited. There could, o there could only be 64 building trees. Well, now that's unlimited. Uh, there could be only 21 factions, that's unlimited. Only 200 regions, that's unlimited. And so for me, as a leader, you know, like, if you can't really treat this like Rome Total War, you have to treat it like its own game. Yeah. And just like the pioneers did in like the 2004, 2005, 2006, seven, we had a lot of modders who modded Rome Total War, the golden age, I guess, you could say of modding and a lot of them um tinkered with the limits and just found out how much can the game do what what breaks what doesn't break and then all the modders where at the present time were people like me who came years later were able to look at all these like findings and posts and everything and all the research that's been done and kind of figure out oh okay um I can definitely do this, but I can't do that. Um, if I do this, I have to make sure this is happening. Um, if I do this, I can't expect anything like this to happen. And so that's where you kind of get like these unwritten rules of Rome Total War, Rome Remastered modding. And yeah. um, with Rome Remastered though, you don't have any of that research or data or trial and error um, yeah, when course. it comes to how many regions, how many units, how many buildings. So what happened is um, 
We ran into some technical issues that were thankfully being reported to us by the player base. And um, those technical issues led us down a winding trail of realizing, um, hey, we've hit some kind of like super internal limit on the engine that's only going to get worse as we go. So we should probably pause and reconsider what our aim is here. Yeah, of course. So um, you hit a few limits, basically, um, along the way. Um, and that's basically, uh, from my understanding anyway, just due to the number of things in the map, like in the campaign. So like, um, yes. is, is that correct? Just like because of the amount of settlements, the amount of armies, the amount of people, all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, so basically, um, didn't even know this existed. And the Feral team didn't ever think we would ever, uh, I guess, have an issue with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's this, like, 64,000, um, quote-unquote, items limit. And what okay. the items limit is, is if you take the campaign, there's a list of items. And, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but it starts with settlements. You know, so from settlements, what comes from settlements? Well, pretty much everything comes from settlements. You get, yeah. um, you have settlements, you have characters, you have uh, units, you have buildings. Yeah. And then on top of that, you will have ports, watchtowers, forts, and even resources, whether they be on the map resources or hidden resources. So stuff that's coded. So basically, everything that makes up the campaign from uh, that's like an object, whether it's hidden, whether it's seen or unseen, those objects, like character, characters, so like all the family trees, right? So every yeah. uh, person that's born, and then every person that's die that dies in the game, is a uh, item. So naturally as a, a campaign unfolds more and more items are added yeah cities get bigger more units are trained armies get bigger there's more characters buildings get built characters die and characters are born and so as the campaign goes you're just consistent you're just consistently adding more items to the campaign yeah well for like a realm total war or even like a smaller mod that's not an issue I mean, you'll never hit sixty four thousand items yeah um but uh, RAS, our, our map is ginormous. So yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have the biggest map, um, or one of the biggest maps. I know Kersey's map is uh, pretty big too, but one of the biggest maps in this modding scene for uh, Rome Total War, Rome Remastered. Um, and so, yeah, naturally, that big map, we wanted to fill it up with as many cities as possible. Yeah. Um, and that is where the greed, uh, I guess, set in with me personally and a couple others who wanted more cities. And, um, you know, you're going about your business not thinking that's going to affect anything, but yeah, then you hit this limit. But, you know, to be fair, I think a lot of people were throwing up red flags and um, I was just kind of like, ah, oh, it'll be fine. Like siege fest, right? Or yeah, too many cities to manage. Um, you know, it is what it is. I learned from my mistakes, and as the leader who pushed for more cities, and now I see not only the gameplay issues but the technical issues and the performance issues. I have decided that you know it's time to pivot time to go in a new direction it's time to cut back the settlements because when you cut back the settlements everything else gets cut back with it buildings units armies characters yeah. um and so that should uh be kind of like a double-edged sword for good uh one on one side of the sword it's going to be um performance and technical issues are going to be much more improved you're not going to have as much lag and turn times aren't going to be as long. Um, weaker PCs should be able to run it and you're not going to get into these save corruption issues or these 
long campaign weird issues that yeah. corrupts the game or glitches out and whatnot. And then on the other side, I think it's going to bring back interest from a lot of uh, players who maybe just saw the amount of settlements that we had. Maybe they're a huge Antigonid fan. Yeah. But, you know, you start with almost 50 cities and you're just like, that's just too much for me. Um, maybe maybe that type of back and enjoys it because they're going to be cut down significantly with the amount of cities that they start where it's a little bit more easier to manage and you have a little bit more breathing room. So that's kind of where, that's kind of what's happened. Yeah. And that's kind of like the general solution to make it all better. Hmm. Yeah, cool. And I, I just want to stress as well, guys, for all you people out there as well, like this wasn't just reckless abandon <laughs> as well. Like this was genuinely what the mod team thought that the engine was capable of. And, you know, you didn't know about this before, did you? Like it wasn't like you knew about this and then you just went, oh, it doesn't matter anyway. We'll just <laughs> add as much as we can. Like it was something that was not known until i i believe feral looked into it a bit as well um is that true or was that um yeah yeah just they, you guys edwin was great um so exactly what you said i mean but i mean look we gotta be realistic this is an older engine and it's been leveled up but that doesn't mean it doesn't have limits or issues and yeah for me yeah. Uh, a small part of me wanted to be, hey, like, I feel like we're eventually going to hit some kind of issue, but we might as well just keep going until we hit that issue. Because yeah. once we hit that issue, it'll help us clearly define what we want. Mm. Um, was the amount of settlements on the map that issue? No. Uh, like, I didn't think that was ever going to be an issue. I mean, I hear, I heard the complaints about like, hey, there's just way too much. Uh, but for me, my whole thing was like, well, that makes sense, especially because they're all vanilla settlements. But if people can just be patient, um, we're going to make the settlements way more interesting. Like I was planning a provincial system. Um, yeah. We were going to have different tiers for cities, like minor cities that didn't grow. Like There was all kinds of ideas going around. Um, but ultimately, it just came down to like, no, it doesn't matter. Some of that stuff, um, it still affects performance. It still causes issues at the end of the campaign. Yeah, it's better to just cut back on the amount of settlements. Um, so yeah, it definitely wasn't like a reckless abandon. We're gonna just get crazy and um, you know who cares? Yeah, <laughs> we, we want we want RIS to be the best. Yeah. And so, um, unfortunately, we're the pion we're kind of like a pioneer team yeah. here. We're just kind of seeing how much this game can handle. But the wise thing and the prudent thing to do is when you hit an issue or hit a limit, you gotta dial it back to where it needs to run efficiently. Because at the end of the day, we want the biggest, baddest mod. But just because it's big and bad doesn't mean it runs well. Yeah, um, of course. We don't want like this hulking monster that nobody's interested in playing, and then we just wasted all of our time. So, yeah, dry, dialing it back is now the now the path. So it's gonna take it's taking us much longer. To yeah. took a lot of discussion time. So mm. a lot of that time was just discussion and debate. Yeah, cool. So. What is the, the path forward then for you guys? I know you've already, you sort of mentioned a, a couple of things there, but the majority of the, the path forward, what what is that? Well, the path forward right now is to cut back the map. Um, I don't have a definitive number, um, a for sure number that I could, that I'd be willing to share publicly. Yeah. Um, but I would say we're just cutting it back by at least 500 settlements. Um, so you can do the math, that's 1,300, but we don't know. We don't know if 1,300 be the yeah. final count. Um, I know through testing that 1,300 seems to be, in my opinion, uh, kind of like the maximum you can add before things start getting weird as far as intern times. Uh, there's like there's just so many like little issues. So one of the issues that was really weird is 
Um, everything everything would seem to run okay, but when you end the turn, all the factions would go by, and then the rebels would just kind of hang. Yeah. And you're like, well, it's the rebels. They have a ton of settlement. But it would hang for like a disproportionate amount of time where you're like, okay, I'm just like staring at a screen and stuck on the rebels. Yeah. And then it'll just like, then it'll just like instantly be done. And then you're back to playing again. But I'm like, okay, I don't think that's fair to have people play something that, you know, this is kind of annoying. Like little annoyances like that. I just, um, I don't think that's good for the general player base. Now, look, there's a ton of people who love the, the history. They love the immersion. They love the units and everything. They don't, they won't care. You know, they'll, they'll gladly stare at this and wait. Yeah. They'll gladly, uh, you know, be tabbed out in another window or they'll be reading a book or listening to music or whatever it is. I'm not speaking to those people. I, and I thank those people for just enjoying it for what it is, even if there's a bunch of weird issues or technical difficulties i appreciate that but my goal is not to just satisfy those people my goal is to satisfy a broader base of player so that more people can enjoy uh the rome total war rome remastered engine with the ras historical immersion gameplay yeah. um and so because of that i cannot justify having something that you know where like the casual player is staring at screen for a minute um wondering what's going on and then all of a sudden he can play again mm. so that that was really an issue that was bothering me um another thing that we picked up on is very large factions like the seleucids yeah uh, the ptolemies um the way the game is built the ai has to process buildings and it takes a little bit to process buildings. It takes a it takes a little bit more time processing time. Um, the Seleucids currently have a hundred settlements. Yeah. And a lot of those build a lot of those settlements, are kind of bare bones settlements because we never got to them. They're like in Mesopotamia, Persia, Syria, Judea, yeah. Phoenicia. You know, we these are areas we haven't remastered. These are areas we haven't researched, really focused on. We've just added the cities, and so like they're just like. 1500 pop walls and like the governor's building and that's it yeah well so what the ai does if it has enough money is it will start building and everything and then start recruiting and everything and what it does is you end up having like a 30 second hang just on the seleucids you know you're just like watching it's like you know the, the faction will go by the faction will the faction will by, and then it's like you're staring at the solution yeah and you're like okay like what is going on here um now when you have let's say all the factions in the game eventually like every single faction like 200 plus factions yeah that, that becomes an issue mm. so it's just um we don't want people sitting in front of their computers for five minutes um just waiting for the turn to end so there was just multiple things regarding like intern times yeah um there's like there was like this weird issue where we found that the game will hang on intern depending on the ratio of rebel owned settlements to faction owned settlements um so that was odd and that took me a long time to figure out and then um between the intern times and then the last thing, and the thing that really kicked this all off was right after we released the Illyrians in April, we had the issue with save corruptions. So the people yeah. that were going deep into the campaign, their saves were corrupting. What I mean by save corruption is, let's say you've conquered 500 settlements. Um, it's you know, you've played for like 400, 500 turns, or I think it was in the 300. It was like people that were getting those like 75 turns, turns. Um, you know, they're just enjoying their campaign, having a great time. They save it, they come back the next day, they try to load it up, and it doesn't load and it breaks. Um, that was the, the Kickstarter to 
pretty much all of this testing and investigation that we've done because we're like, well, if that's happening now, and we've yeah. only done like the Greeks, the Illyrians, the Thracians, and the Anatolians, and like the Hellenistic dynasties, we still have the Romans, we still have the Celts, Carthage, Iberia, like we have all the rest of the map to add factions and units and mechanics. Um, it was kind of like, let's not ignore this. And so as the safe corruption was being looked into, and we figured out what the issue was, it, it, it became clear to me that, well, let's do a stress test. And so I added all the factions that we've planned to the map. So I had this map full of factions. And, you know, I hit in turn, and that's when I realized that we have some intern issues and some hang issues. Mm. And then that's when I real that's about the same time I realized we had that items limit issue. And common sense was just like, yeah, the less settlements you have, the less issues you're going to have. Yeah. So that has pretty much been the path forward is taking out settlements because I believe that removing all the settlements will remove a lot of the issues that we have. Um, and I think it will allow more people to enjoy the game. Yeah. And obviously, just to be clear, guys, that doesn't mean it's going to be a 500 settlement map like 0.4. <laughs> it's still going to be a very large, very large map, isn't it? So it's not, it's not like all of the settlements are getting removed. Um, but Correct. there's going to be, it'll be some. It'll, it'll, it'll definitely be over a thousand settlements. It, but yeah. right now, look, it's 1,840 something right now. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're cutting the fat. Hmm. We're, cut, we're cutting the fat. There's a lot of settlements that, you know, in uh, in a map or in the source, they were just, you know, yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so, <laughs> uh, those have been, like, the prime targets of removal. Or, like, this tribe was mentioned. And, like, so Jorloff put such and such tribe name. And then Kome, K-O-M-E in the game. It's Greek for village. So he basically just, you know, he finds like this random archaeological site. Yeah. He knows the tribe is there based on the sources, puts two and two together, and then you have like this tribal village. Okay. Well, that tribe was mentioned one time by one source. Do we really need it? It's yeah. been a lot of that lately. Yeah, of course. Um and like we said before, guys, all of the work that you would associate with the mod, like units, factions, um, history, traits, ancillaries, all of that has been continuing while these issues have been being sorted out, hasn't it? So um, in terms of all of that stuff, um, what are we sort of looking forward to? Is there any little teasers you can maybe give about uh, what we're looking forward to in the next uh, the next update? Well, other than the fact that the map will have less settlements, I believe our next release is going to be big. Mm. Um, and not big like it's been big in the bad terms. I'm talking big as far as a lot of content and a lot of just, just the performance alone. The improvements when it comes to the performance alone, I think is big enough. The bringing back people who maybe were disillusioned from, hey, that's just too much. Hey, I don't like this siege fest. Hey, that's just way too many settlements to manage. I think listening to them finally and then also running into that wall that we ran into um, and dialing it back was the right move. So I think it's going to be big from a sense of like, hey, we're listening to you and here you go. Here's a, here's a better game experience. But it's also going to be big content-wise because you're absolutely right. The guys on the team have not stopped making content um, while the map has been discussed and debated and worked on. So yeah. we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I am super excited. I can definitively say that we have multiple remastered factions completed, um, including... Pontus, which is a very much, it's a fan favorite. Pontus is completely remastered. They have a bunch of Cappadocian units now. Speaking of Cappadocia, they're finished. 
because Pontus and Cappadocia were very similar in yeah. ethnicity and uh, fighting style. So they share a lot of the same. So those two factions on the eastern end of Anatolia um, are finished, you know, and the reasoning was, is like, hey, we set out to do the Anatolians with the Greeks, the Thracians, the Illyrians. Cappadocians, even though they're more like related to Armenians and Eastern type peoples, they're still Anatolians and we need to finish them. So it was a lot of work, but they got finished. And then alongside that, a couple minor factions got finished too. My favorite faction, Paphagonia. <laughs> you're you're yeah. too, by the way. My, my um, favorite faction as well, yeah. Yep. They, are, <laughs> they are completely remastered. Um, and the, the Silesians are completely remastered. And I think you're going to have to do another Silesian campaign because they have a completely new transformed roster yeah. that's very unique to them. And I think it'll make like that pirate raider campaign a lot more interesting when mm -hmm. you have the Seleucids and the Ptolemies around you. But And then finally, the Bosporan Kingdom finally is remastered. Not just a couple Greek units with a bunch of placeholders. They have remastered Scythian and local units as well as Bosporan specific units. A lot of research and work went into that. Um, I have to give a huge shout out to Balbor. That yeah. guy has been a machine. And on top of that, the officers, the captains, the generals, the officers, the standard bearers, all of those are going to be remastered for every Greek, Thracian, Illyrian, Hellenistic faction. Um, so that's a lot uh, when it comes to like visuals. Um, traits are completely done for yeah. the most part, you know, some tweaks here and there, but they've completely been done. Uh, new mechanics with your generals, such as like being wounded. Um, forget what he put. I definitely don't want to, I don't want to like miss what Lusitanio told us. So let's see what he said here. Yeah, so new mechanics that are going to track wounded troops, generals. There's going to be foraging mechanics, ship supplies, and admiral's experience. And then on top of that, you know, he redid a lot of the description to be more Rome Total War-esque in nature. So kind of humorous. Yeah. As well as fun. And so, yeah, it's he's done a good work there. And then when it comes to mechanics, especially, we have big news is the whole building system is going to be redone um as well as the trade and economy farming system yeah um and, and recruit and recruitment which is the map the big one for me i think is uh um recruitment yes that is going to be it's going to be a new game that's how big this is in my opinion it's a new game it's not the old RAS that we've been used to for years. It's it's a new game. I think some people could say go back to the O five O version with more some more settlements and then a way more I guess finalized feel when it comes to me mechanics and whatnot. Like um, we're adding a ton of new trade resources. We yeah. will have buildings connected to the trade resources, and uh, up like it, it's going to allow players to really make choices. So there's going to be choices to be made in each settlement based on what the region gives you. So yeah, whether it's the farms, the the iron mines, or you know maybe like there, there's an expensive good that that region is known for exporting. You as a player need to f kind of pick what do I want this city to focus on. Um, so it's going to be really fun. Um, and I think what it's going to do for somebody like you who loves building management and city management, it's going to allow you to actually have diverse choices instead of just yeah same choices every settlement. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, of course... So we said about the buildings, the um, the recruitment, um, and sort of governing the cities as well. Like, so basically, there's going to be a lot of stuff, guys. Um, <laughs> a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, 
which is going to be awesome. And like I say, all of this has been been worked on while the issues have been sorted. So, and it's been being worked on for a long time. So you can imagine the amount of content that's going to come with the next release or next couple of releases. Um, but final final question then. Um, <laughs> it's the uh, it's the all important question I think for a lot of people. Um, are we looking at Rome anytime soon or anything like that? Obviously, you don't need to say a date or anything, but um, are there any thoughts on Rome at the moment? There's thoughts on Rome. Um, yes, I would say Romans are going to be worked on very soon. Um, I don't want to promise anything, but based on all the work that needs to be done, I can at least be confident and say that not only will we have the Romans remastered um, next, because, you know, everything I just said about Balbor, I mean, we have to move on to the next culture, and yeah. the Italic and the Romans are next. So, naturally, we are there. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I also don't know how long the map configuration is. And let me throw in another wrinkle. The next release is going to have over 200 factions on the map, whether they mm. be starting on the map or appearing on the map through emergent scripts or whatnot. Or whatnot. Yeah. Um, through this map overhaul, we are also doing not a faction overhaul, but somewhat of a faction overhaul. Um, I won't get into specifics because nothing's been determined yet, but let's just say I've been working ahead and doing a prototype version of our map and mod. And what I've done is I've gone area by area. I cut the settlements. And then in the, those areas, I add the factions that we had originally planned that are like shoe-ins. Like, of yeah. course this faction had to be added, right? Um, but I don't add the factions that are kind of like, um, they could be added, but we could not add them. So any factions that are just barely in the list or just barely out of the list, I don't add those. I only add the shoe ins and when, when I'm doing, and I'm almost done actually, I'll be working on it today, is <clears throat> I get to give the team the sense of like, hey, this is what it could look like. This is kind of first draft, a rough draft. Here's our map cut down to X amount of regions, and here's X amount of factions on the map so we can kind of see how it all plays out. From there, with the new mechanics we're working on, a lot of testing is going to be done as far as like balance. And then as far as like, hey, we need a faction. Hey, we have way too many factions over here. Hey, like we forgot about this faction. So it's going to give us that flexibility to add new things. So with all that considered and all that work needing to be done for the next release, I can positively tell everybody that the Romans are likely going to be, if not fully remastered, at least um, like the pre-Marian italic units will be remastered for the yeah. next release. So that that's going to be, um, it's, it's a very exciting time for us as because I've been the guy saying hold off, hold off, hold off and now it's kind of like hey go for it because we have so much work to do with factions and map that the unit guys they need to stay busy and the Romans are next so yeah I would say the Romans are going to be next in our next release including all factions including a brand new map with less settlements including all new mechanics and most importantly, a clean, fun, uh, light experience for the player. Brilliant. Cool. Well, I think that is uh, thoroughly answered all the questions that uh, that bob around the Discord every now and then. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much for that, a -hole. Um And before we go, I just wanted to say, guys, if, you, uh, if you're thinking about playing uh, RAS after watching this video, I have released a video recently about the 10 factions that I find most fun in the game that are remastered. So if you are playing a faction, make sure you do play in the remastered areas. There's a lot more content there. There's a lot more units, all that sort of thing. So that's Greece, Thrace, um, a lot of Anatolia, 
uh, the Illyrians as well, and the Hellenistic factions too. So, uh, yeah, play one of those guys. And if you're struggling for ideas, check out my video as well if you are interested. Completely up to you. My recommendation at the minute, uh, in terms of what I've been really enjoying, the Adrissians, 100%, and the Antigonids as well. Do you have a maybe a final recommendation for anyone, Ahal? And if you say Chios, then I'm going to end the video instantly. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you warned me because I was about to spit it out. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I think for me, based on like what I've been hearing from you and a couple others, um, if you want a different experience, play an Illyrian faction. Uh it's much harder. And yeah. if you want to kind of see what it's like, watch his RDAI campaign. Um there's something about Illyrians and Thracians for that matter. It's just fun. Yeah. Um, especially when you're going up against like these huge infantry nations in the Greeks and the Hellenistic Kingdom. So I would say if you want a really interesting campaign, play a Thracian or Illyrian campaign. Um, but if you're a Greek fan, any of the Greek city states is a lot of fun to play. You have yeah. your own political situation that you have to kind of work through. Um, most Greek factions are going to have a giant faction in competition with it. So in the West, you may have like Emporion or Mastelia or Akragas. You're going to have to deal with the Romans and Carthaginians at some point. Um, whereas in Greece, you're going to have to deal with the Antigonids. And then if you're in Anatolia or on the fringes of you're going to have to deal with the Seleucids and or the Ptolemies. So um, I would say any of those factions would be interesting. And then uh, if you like big empire management any of the diadochi factions are great however um just know that this will be the last version that's currently out right now where you're gonna have like extremely massive uh Seleucids. i mean they're still gonna be massive trust me they're not, <laughs> they're not gonna get cut down by half or anything like that but if there's anybody out there who enjoys them for what they are right now Please, please enjoy it while it lasts because it's going to go away and it will not be as massive. So it's just going to be less cities to manage. Um, so I just want to set, set that out there for anybody who... I don't want to ignore anybody out there who... Well, I don't want it to change. Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely empathize with that. But at the same time, there's just too many issues and there's too many people on the other side of the aisle that just can't do it and we have to make this for everybody and so i hope the people that really love it for what it is and don't want it to be changed can be accepting of the changes that are going to happen um, and still enjoy it i don't want to lose these people just because we had to dial it back so i just want to send that out there in a sincere form yeah and let people know that we want everybody who plays res to have a good time yeah brilliant well, I, uh, I think that covers everything, guys. So um, I hope you have enjoyed this little update, guys. And uh, if you are interested in anything else to do with RAS, um, I have a lot of videos in terms of the previous update, the new units, all that sort of thing. And I'm sure as soon as we start get going again with um, a new update, that's all going to restart as well. So um, thank you very much for watching. And once again, massive thank you to Ahal and the mod team as well. And uh, thank you for joining me, mate. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for watching and listening. Um, we'll try to keep everybody updated from here on out. Um, expect dev diaries, sneak peeks, all that. We definitely know that we've been a little uh, quiet. So with this video, um, I hope to lead our team into getting a little bit more active in the public sphere. Yeah, brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you all again on the next video.